Hi guys, Cliff here. Welcome back to part three of the Da Vinci Flyer, as we're calling it. Um, the Leonardo da Vinci inspired design that I've interpreted and hopefully we can get this to fly ready control. So I'm going to start tonight with the wheels and then move on and reveal to you the wing covering material that I've bought. So let's go on with it. Cheers. I'm just doing a axle for the little wheel. Uh, found a bit of dowel. I was going to use carbon, but ugh. <laughs> so now, now I'm using, uh, let's just take that motor out a sec. Oh, there we go. Put the glue itself in with the stain then. Um, axle. In this video, I'm going to reveal to you guys, I know you're all wondering, you've all been wondering exactly what fabric I'm going to use. Well, all will be revealed very soon. Today would have been a good day to test fly it had I been actually ready. Yogif, I think that's how you pronounce your name. That's how I pronounce it anyway. Um, was asking, would there be plans available for this when I'm done? The answer is, I think I answered him in part two, hopefully something better. And what I'm wondering is if I can get this um, model to fly to the standard to which we would all like to see it, then um, I'll make a kit, make a kit up, draw it up, cut it up, laser cut it, and supply the parts. That's a nice wheel actually, because it's not quite in the center, so it's got a lovely elliptical circle. Oh yes. When I make a wheel, now what I've got to do is make sure that this doesn't get any glue on the inside, which it shouldn't do. Okay. Okay, one wheel done. One wheel to go. And that's glued in, that's strengthened it all up. I made it a low undercarriage, so it doesn't get knocked off really. The propeller is only going to be small, won't be more than a six inch, seven inch probably. So, well clear. Um, servers could go in, but let me, the time has now come, guys, to show you the covering. Now, don't laugh. I can laugh. But it's, it's not a fabric. It's right here behind me. It's not a fabric at all. It is this gloriously, can you see my face? This gloriously translucent pink. It's pinker one side than the other. Let's just bring it down a bit. Look at this. Uh, cover it. It's like a, it's like a, a sort of a, a slimy, slippery, like you get on shower curtain um, material. Uh, that sort of plastic. Um, so, I've experimented, I've tried, um, what's it called? What's that funny stuff? I've tried, oh yeah, Mod Podge, uh, which is sort of curious substance, but that's that there, look. It's just, it, it doesn't soak into the bolsa. It doesn't obviously soak into the plastic. Uh, You who pour, which is like can be a contact glue, if you put it together, take it off, let it dry for a few seconds, put it back. That works well. Wellish anyway. And then you've got CA. And CA, if I pull it really hard, it won't pull sideways, it'll probably peel, but we won't be peeling it. So I've also tried that on a piece of carbon, and again, it sticks very nicely indeed. And just for a bit of fun, to stop it peeling up at the back, I've, well, as an experiment, not so much fun, but as an experiment, I've cut a little triangle and just stuck over the top. It doesn't have to be a triangle, it could be a round, half round, anything, but that's stuck plastic to plastic pretty well. And he stuck it five, 10 minutes ago. Let's see if I can peel it off. 
now it's sort of welded the two bits together so that stops the end from coming off I really wanted to put the fabric on the top Tim the plain man uh, correctly said that it would be nice to see it sort of ballooning up a little bit taking the shape of a like a hang glider um, I've got positive incidents on the wing anyway even if it was a dead flat sheet it should fly okay but a little bit of ballooning is going to aesthetically look superb as well it won't be able to balloon very much because it's going to be flat laid on flat and stuck to the frame how I'm, I'm not quite sure anyway let's just lay it on the frame see how it looks exciting isn't it oh yes tell you what let's just put a weight on there stop it moving about let's put two weights on there we go so let's just lay this on let's see how it looks let's just pin that on there a minute Maybe another one down this side. So it's laying flat. If I trace that shape out, what I'm thinking is once I've got it, it's going to be a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, I'm thinking I could, what if I could, I was just going to say, I'm going to sort of stick it around underneath the leading edge, stick it down on the, let's call them ribs, and we know what we're talking about stick it down onto the, the, each rib it's got to be upside down maybe lay the wing on it and then run some CA in in a controlled way once the CA is on then I can cut I'll make templates perhaps cut the shape quite what's going to happen to the trailing edge in flight well it should balloon up really in fact I'll tell you what there's no reason why it should be stuck to the main spar, we'll call it a name. There's no reason why it should be stuck to that because as long as it's stuck to the ribs, it will balloon up. It'll give it a bit of an aerofoil as the lower pressure on the top pulls it up. The kite man said in video number two, I mean, his suggestion was to put it underneath, of course. There's advantages to that. Mainly, it can't blow off, but the CA stuck so well, I'm confident it won't. Plus, of course, the main spar will prevent prevent any sort of wing section forming. I saw wing section, it's not really a wing section, but it won't be pushing it the right way, will it? So, my my gut feeling is to do it this way round. So then, once it's stuck on, then I can cut a nice curve into the shape and it won't fray that's the thing with this fabric it won't fray I know ripstop nylon won't fray either but I've tried gluing nylon and you just can't CA to it this surprisingly does CA rather well that's really good I'm really happy with that the pilot is going to be the icing on the cake it's really going to finish the whole thing off I'll tell you what I could do um, on that, my other planes, uh, I've got a profile pilot, so I could, I could actually cut a profile pilot. If I can't find a suitable pilot, then a profile pilot will do it just as nicely. I'm going to start um, just by tacking it on the end of these pieces, and I can flop that back and work my way along, something like that. So to put down a piece of polythene. I don't want to spoil my plan at this stage. So we'll put that like that. And as soon as it doesn't move, I'll lay a couple of those on there. I'm going to start by doing, well, not by doing these two at the back, I think. One there. One there. Okay, let's lay that on. There you are. And it sort of goes super black where the CA is. Super black.
so you can see exactly how much you've done. It will dry. Um, I could do this one here. So basically I'm going to do this bar. Might just Much about there. That will even spread. Drop it on. Take that off now. Right, what I'm going to do now is just to run a load long here. Move it out, drop it on. Let's take that off there. Just like that. Just going to run down this, oops, that's a bit too much, down this spar. Take that on. Move it down. Yeah. Okay, so now we get our cutting board. Like that. Turn it over. What I'm going to do is cut the scalloping in the trailing edge first job. And I'm going to use my first wing as a template. They're pretty much the same. Right. Stand up for this. I've only got one shot at it, so let's get it right. that important to get it absolutely identical of course Doesn't make much difference okay one yeah. okay good just cut this one here while I'm at it Not bad. Right, I've got a triangle to put on there. That just stops the end of the spar from lifting. Let's just get it on there. reasonable amount to wrap over here so I'm going to go for about five millimeters I think a little bit there maybe I'll go over the details afterwards so we're nearly there though guys um, just got the front edge to do now and the way I'm going to do this is to cut darts in it because I want it to go all the way around like that one there. Hopefully I can get a bit better on this one. 
Put that there. Spread it out a bit. One piece there. One piece there. Pull that tight into there like that. Pulling just a little bit of tension on there to pull it in because you can see where the glue is. I mean, it's mostly aesthetic reasons, really. A couple of wrinkles in the wing ain't going to make any difference. I'm going to get this done and get back on the triplane. See if it flies. If I can get it to fly, then there will be something forthcoming. I think it's a little bit of experiment because, of course, I haven't got ailerons. I'm hoping that the tail end will do all the turning. I wonder if I could fly it around the pole to check its stability in pitch a bit. You never know, I might do that. Yeah, first look at it. Oh, look at that. I've added a reasonable amount of weight. It's an ornithopter. Wouldn't that be cool actually? That's what Leonardo envisaged. But it will puff out quite well, so look at that. That's spectacular. Oh, God, cool. I'm really happy. Oh, I just had a thought, actually. I don't need to put scoops in. All I've got to do is to scoop this back, say, top and bottom, or side to side. And maybe take out a little semicircle here, and I've got two holes. It's not going to be much, but it will all help. I've decided to make a really simple connection to the tail end um, just using one mil wire. Uh, I've got a kink in it so as I can make fine adjustments which I have as you can tell from the difference in them. They go down to a little guide and to stop them whipping and I've changed the horns actually for slightly longer ones because I felt they were on under too much pressure so just to illustrate how they work this end is ailerons well, not ailerons but hopefully that's enough I can increase the flow now I'm going to but that's right that's left obviously up and down so um little progress there it's nice and simple install there a little bit of progress on the front end as well, just to aid um, a bit of ventilation. I've put a, I can't plug that in, but I've put a file, three little hollows there. So when the motor face goes back, it can get in, the air can get in. And I'm going to just use a pointer a minute. Use that. And I'm going to take out the middle section of these supports so as any air can sort of flow in and get past there because obviously I don't think there's going to be any air on the bottom. She lives. <laughs> so I've got a little man sitting in there. That's the uh, rough idea. Um, let me explain what I've got here then. So I've got battery there the ESC just tucked up the side um, this plate's just to disguise all the servo wires and tuck in the battery wires I've got to fit the wings to check the CRG uh, still got the rubber band around holding the center, wing center on because I'm thinking I might want to make that 
adjustable the angle of attack so let's put the wings on it would be interesting to see if this these wings can actually take the wing loading that they're going to have you should be able to but you can never tell so the center of gravity currently is quite a long way back actually it's there look I don't know, that's sort of there. Could be one third of the wing, hard to tell. It's about one third of the, uh, this part of the wing. Now it's gonna be exciting to see, isn't it? They're actually flat, but I'll tell you what I'm gonna have a go at. So we don't break it. I'm going to try picking it up. First of all, from here, no oh, easy. Let's go a bit further out because once it's flying, the wings are going to increase in dihedral. Oh, look at that! <laughs> it's still not off the ground. That's a colossal curve. There we go. Wow. Oops. So that's quite a quite a good test. I haven't got a man yet, so I'm thinking I might um, just cut out a cardboard figure like this just to maybe just glue together the two halves for the time being. I think the man makes it actually. I've baked a cake just now, a Victoria sponge, Victoria sandwich. I haven't baked a cake for decades okay in grams it's 377 in ounces that's 13.2 ounces so it's still two and three quarter ounces under a pound which you know is a fair amount of wing area there so I'm hopeful that all is going to be well how about that then guys <laughs> he's the only one I could find uh, mad enough to pilot this on a maiden flight test pilot cliff uh, that's going to sit in there like that on each side I've got two I'm going to glue them together now now these are the glued together so I'll sit I'm sorry the pilot will sit in there like that and then I thought it would be nice to have a little cover over there so I've just cut a template out and I'll make a little plywood cover to go over there and that completes that nose rather nicely I think actually and covers up my feet. So I'm going to cut a piece of ply out there and that will spring in there. I might put a little magnet just to retain it. Um, it's got to come out because I need to access the, the connections for the motor. Um, not sure how I'm going to fit the pilot yet. Probably a magnet or two on each hip. I'm just going to glue this now. I'm going to glue it all the way around the edges. Maybe I'll glue them together up to the ankles. Over the thing, glue the head together and then down over the back a bit. And it can cover up the receiver a little bit. Might even make a little cover to go over the servos to tidy it up. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to glue all this together using Mod Podge right by now. He's a cheeky looking chappy, isn't he? Open it up at the back to fit over the receiver, like that. Bend it around a bit like that. Don't trim it to fit inside there. I'll put that in, but I'll I'll push it right to the front because I don't want the white glue to touch any of the um, mating surfaces. All right, see what magnets we've got. One there. One there. So I can put that over the magnet just like that. 
glue it on just like that and then trim it to shape. Okay, let's try it in again. Should just clip in like that. Should be fine. Magnets are pretty strong. Well, here's an idea. If I put a back on here, I can extend it flat like that so the whole lot comes off in one go. That might do with just one magnet on the front actually, just to pull it in there tight, just to go in the back there. Something with a little curved top, just enough to disguise the card on the back. I could put a little support behind it. That will hold the piece of cardboard behind flat. So tomorrow I'll stain that, give a whole lot of matte lacquer, stain that, do the same for the magnet. I'm going to let it dry really. Okay, let's stop there. Okay, this is um, this is the final assembly. Uh, what have I done? I've made a hatch magnetically uh, retained. I put some little put some little like rivets or something around the hatch there to make it look jolly. That just clips in there and magnets to the front. That tidies that up quite nicely. I've made a pilot. <laughs> Handsome devil. Two bits of card and then an internal piece of card which I've glued to a little backrest and then the backrest glues to a piece of cardboard which covers up the servo. So, and there's a magnet in it here and here corresponding magnets there so just fits over there like that and clips in wouldn't like to say I could pick the weight of the plane up but it should hold the pilot in and it covers up the servos quite nicely so that's uh, the fuselage finished in fact that's the plane finished um, I've still got to play with the propellers I've got another propeller again I can try just to um, play with the amount of amps the motor is drawing on the given prop but let's pop the wings in because that completes the build then and I haven't seen the wings in with the pilot on board so I'll have a look all scale models need a pilot I wasn't sure what scale to make the pilot but I figure he's pretty uh, couldn't be any bigger, obviously. These being spring loaded into here are quite good because it <clears throat> means that the wing can't come off very easily in flight. It would be easy to retain them just by putting a little pin through here and here just to hold them in. <laughs> Look at that. And of course it gives it a bit of vertical fin area as well. <laughs> well, it's been a fun exercise. Thanks for looking guys. Thanks for um, following along on this one. It's only three parts. The fourth part is gonna be the maiden flight, which hopefully will be reasonably, reasonably soon. If you haven't seen part one and two, uh, I'll link to them in the playlist containing all three videos. And eventually the maiden flight video is going to be there as well. So check out this link and I'll see you uh, in the next video. Thanks for watching and bye-bye. Cheers. Cheers, cheers.